example, I was recruited into the realm of, of witchcraft, into spiritualism, to learn to be the third high ranked of a worshiper for 25 years. Because a lot of people watching hear this and don't really understand the magnitude of how real the spiritual realm is. Absolutely. I mean, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. My job is to paralyze you in the spirit realm because everything starts in the spirit realm. If I can paralyze you in the spirit realm, then whatever has to happen in the natural won't happen. So I will operate in the spirit realm. The spirit realm is more real than the realm that we are in now because everything starts in the spirit realm. It's more real than the oxygen you breathe. What's happening in the spirit realm? There's a wall taking place. I have to keep you away from the plan of God no matter what, at any cost. You keep saying you. So when you say that to me, I'm understanding you to mean that when you were in Satan's army, I'm going to just say it like mm -hmm. it is. No, absolutely. You would actually take on the role of a soldier for the devil. Yes. To do what in the spirit realm? In other words, to do witchcraft, to do tower car readings, to do uh, spells, to paralyze that, their, their neighborhood so the Christ, the cross won't reach that neighborhood. So the people in that neighborhood will know that it was a spirit of poverty, a spirit of prostitution, drugs. I keep it, I feed that spirit in the neighborhood to control that neighborhood so the cross of Jesus Christ will not come into that neighborhood. If you're a believer, to make you believe that the Christ you serve wasn't real, he was a fantasy. The cross is a fantasy. The cross is a figure of your imagination. I was very good at that. I had like a PhD doing that. Wow. And then after that, I discredit the cross because I have to discredit the cross because if I can discredit the cross, you have nowhere to run to. Sure. So you were vulnerable. You're in the middle of nowhere. So now I can come and attack. It's like a lion. He chased the, he chased the hurdle. He goes after the weakest prey. And then he attacks and he focuses on that weakest prey, so he brings it down. So I, I, I have to separate you from the cross. So I'm able to separate you from the cross and to make it a figure of imagination. I knew that there was gateways and portals that you were open because you were struggling. So I would hold on to that and then bring you down. Well, I would sit in the church. I would go to church as a demon man and sit in the church and break the unity of the church or break the unity of the spirit going on so people won't get saved. Wow. What was your goal? What was the, game? What was the end game? Move up the ranks as a devil worshiper. Move up the ranks. Make my daddy proud. Did you, Fulfill my assignment. Did you actually see things you couldn't explain take place? I, mean, I would sit with the devil like I'm sitting you with today. I would talk to the devil all night long. He would manifest in human form. He would come into my house, the, the present would change, the atmosphere would change, the, the room would change. Your present was there. I sold my, my soul to the devil. I got the marks in my body here. I got the marks here. I got the marks here. I got the pentagram carved into my flesh. So I would sit with the devil all night long and speak to the devil because the devil wanted fellowship. Now, John, you can appreciate. That's hard to believe. I'm not questioning you. I'm saying that people watching right now are saying, wait a minute, I see that in the movies, but this doesn't happen in real life. Right. How do we respond to that? I mean, you really saw the devil. Yeah, absolutely. Sat with the home, sat with demons, principality. There's, there's, there's two worlds. There's, there's, there's the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of heaven. There's people that have seen angels. There's people that had in contact with Christ. So if you can see that, then there's a devil. Sure. There's an opposite. Right. If you, you can't just believe part of the Bible. Exactly. You can't believe in miracles and not expect to see them. You can't believe exactly. in, in that Jesus raised from the dead right. and not believe in that kind of real supernatural world is what you're describing. Right. And you saw it. I saw you it. I lived it, it for 25 years. I mean, you can't. Jesus talked about more about demons, cast out more demons. Wasn't that a third of his ministry? Exactly. Why do we not see more of that today? Because the church is preaching people happy. They're not preaching people free. Say that again. The church is preaching people happy, but they're not preaching people free. People, Christians are coming in in bondage and in, in, in shackles and strongholds and, and, and generational curses in the, in the pastors. And no disrespect to anyone's ministry because I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm a believer. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm on the side. I'm on the right side. But I can't preach you free, but I'm preaching you happy. Right. You know, it's like a sugar rush. I'm giving you a sugar rush, but I'm not really, you're not being healed. You're not right. being delivered. You're not being set free. Right. Well, there's a place for that. I mean, I, I would agree there's a place for that kind of ministry. But equally, there's a place for someone to be able to speak into a circumstance with real experience, who has experienced, lived, been deep in the demonic world, and can say to someone that is just trying to live happy, it's not a matter of state of mind. It's not a matter of just feeling happy. You've got some gateways in your life that you've got to shut. Mm -hmm. We've got to do some spiritual surgery, if you will, exactly. to get them out of the ditch that they're in. That's what you're describing. Right. And exactly. that's your ministry. And that's my ministry. That's my ministry, ministry is to come to set the captives free. People have forgot to, to know that there's a devil to fight. There's demons to cast out. There's, there's, there's a world of darkness that we're in a battle for souls. 
Sure. Who's going to win souls? Jesus is going to win more souls or the devil is? It's really what it's all about. Exactly. You know, it is a battle for souls. So spiritual warfare is needed. I mean, the, the Bible says it's clear. I mean, when I read the Bible, it comes so much to life. It said the kingdom of, of the light. I used to I used to project. I used to leave my body home and I should project to go to different neighborhoods and put curses in the neighborhood because whatever you can curse on the spirit realm is able to come out the natural. In the only neighborhood that I was not able to curse it was a Christian that were praying for the neighborhoods. They had wow. a circle of unity praying for the neighborhoods and they used to chase me out to prayer. Wow. Of one accord, one unity, praying in the spirit, casting out demons, healing the sick. People need to see the power of God against the power of darkness. And I would submit that most people watching have never really experienced the power of God. Oh. They've never seen what you're describing. I mean, I came from a kingdom of darkness. I had a hundred thousand dollar witchcraft stuff in my house. I had human bones in my house. If I would tell you I was going to kill you in 30 days of witchcraft, I was going to kill you in 30 days of witchcraft. So today, Jesus had raced everything and took my mess and made it a testimony. Wow. And now I'm, I'm, I'm educating the body of Christ that there's a devil out there that we need to fight. I'm educating the church, the spiritual warfare. We need to stay free. You know, not only, yes, we're freed by the cross, we accepted Jesus. Accepting Jesus gets you into the game, by the way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it, it gets you into the game. Now you have to walk out your Christianity. Mm -hmm. You don't get saved, in other words, and it's all happy from there. Right, it's not all happy You get from saved, there. and then the real battle starts. There's devils that's trying to stop your purpose and your destiny. There's devils that's trying to give you, give you, give you an abortion. An abortion by how? But you have a purpose and a destiny that is in you, that God already put in you. He's trying to abort that baby. He's trying to abort that purpose and destiny so you won't reach the cross. You won't reach God's baby. Where there's high crime, mm -hmm. prostitution, killing, um, that, that's not just the work of people that make bad choices. There's an actual spiritual influence, a demonic force at play in that city. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's on somebody's job. Right. Maybe it's in a home. Mm -hmm. I mean, the spirit realm mm -hmm. is alive, and it's not just bad decisions that people make. It's not just choices that we make. Right. You're saying that sometimes what someone watching right now might be facing might in fact be a demonic attack on their life. That's one thing bugs my mind. Right. You, everybody's angry with God. Well, everybody wants to blame God. When everybody wants to blame God for everything. Sure. But no one is blaming the devil these days. The church, everybody's blaming God. I didn't get my boyfriend. I didn't get a girlfriend. I didn't get married. I didn't get a car. I didn't get the promotion. Everybody's blaming God. Right. No one's blaming the devil. Do you believe that people watching right now that are facing the challenges of life, and not just everyday challenges, but grips. Grips. Their bank account's empty. They are fighting every day with their spouse. They just went to the doctor and found out they had a diagnosis of some disease. Maybe they have inflammation that won't go away. Maybe they're angry all the time. They're frustrated all the time. They're depressed. They see no hope. All they see is negativity. Do you believe that the devil could be work right now in their life? Oh, absolutely. You know, let, let's put it that If it was something natural, you can fix it. Mm. If it's something natural, it's easy to fix. You can put it together. It might take you some time, but you can get a remedy for it and get it fixed. Whether it's a cold, sickness, whatever, a situation in your life, situation at work, situation in your marriage. You can sit down with your wife, talk it out. You can fix it. But if it's something that you can't fix that is over your head, but you, don't, you try every situation possible to fix it, and you can't fix it. Then there's something more at play. There's more to it. It's called supernatural. The devil studies you. The devil is more real. The kingdom of darkness is more real than the oxygen we breathe. He studies you. He has an assignment. He, the Bible said the devil goes as, as, roaring, as a roaring lion to see who he can devour. He, in the book of Job, the, the God asked him, where do you come from? He said, I roam the earth back and forth looking for an opportunity hmm. to see who I can bring down. So the opportunity is you can give your opportunity to God or you can give it to the devil. Wow. Choose who you give it today. You, give your, you can give your life to God or you can give it to the devil. So whatever circumstance you give to, if it's the circumstance of darkness, it's like people, have you ever seen uh, uh, families, uh, this guy's a baseball player, some become a baseball player, generation mm -hmm, of blessings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but this generation of curses too. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, I, I, my father was an alcoholic, now I'm an alcoholic. Right. So the so devil knows where to hold on to. He knows where is the weak link. He knows what is the open door so in your life. So if someone is struggling with addiction, mm -hmm. if, if they can't seem to get break free of it, you're saying that that could be demonic influence. Oh, absolutely. 99.9. .9, if, if it wasn't, he could get free in the natural. If, if I'm struggling with something natural, and, and I'm, I'm struggling with something natural, I can get free because it's natural. It's, I, I, can, I can overcome it. What do you say to people where they ask the question, isn't it just a state of mind? Maybe I'm just chemically addicted. You know, Maybe I can't break free just because it's, it's just I'm addicted. I pray for this young man, right? He was 26 years bound in schizophrenia. 26 years, chemical imbalance. Mm. He's free today. 
manifested. I mean, from his medication, he had nine medications of different kind. And today, praying with him and a wonderful brother in Vegas, Shannon. Him and I pray for this brother consistently. We pray for him about 15, 15 to 17 times. We did deliverance. This brother today is, the doctors are done fine. They cannot understand how this man is sound in his mind today. Other areas I explain, you know, the finances and merit relationships and these other things. Could there actually be a stronghold in people's lives watching right now that they're not aware of? Exactly. Because sometimes people are not aware, sometimes out of anger, out of frustration. People speak things into their ways. Explain that to me. You, know, you talked about gateways in your book. You talked about in your book how you can open gateways and give the devil access into your life to wreak havoc in your life. Right. Explain that, if you would, for me and the people watching. Say if I was married, right, and I, my, me and my wife had an argument, and I, I turned around, I can't, I, you know, I hate this, I hate that, I can't believe this, you know, I hate those kids, I, I, I hate you. Why you make this bad decision? You're no good for nothing. Uh, I can't wait to get divorced from you. Hmm. The devil, bang, jumps on that opportunity. He start increasing that temper. He start increasing that circumstance in your house. He starts to the point that you lose life in your house. You lose life in your kids. You lose life in your marriage. Now you start getting attracted to other things mm -hmm. because you have opened the door because what you speak is what you become. And so our words really are powerful. Powerful, very powerful. And the devil understands this too. I said, well, to maybe I'm not like the next guy. He's caught up in pornography. Or he, I'm not like the next guy. He's cheating on his wife. Or I'm not like the, you know, you might, you might categorize your sin in categories. Got it. God, God sees sin as sin. Got it. One sin can keep you away from heaven. It kept Adam away from the garden, one situation. It kept Esau, one bowl of soup, cost him his birthrights. One situation can keep it. The devil can use one situation to hold you from God's very best. And you might think it's light. He can use a situation as a, as a gateway, you described. As a gateway, book. as a portal, to get a grip, to have an asset, to have a stronghold in your life. And what does he do with that stronghold? What is his mission? The obvious, to keep us from heaven. But the devil, as you describe, is doing so much more than that. It's not just on a mission to capture our soul, to keep us from our heavenly home. Amen. He's on a mission to destroy our life here on planet Earth. And that strong has to come down. Doubt, unbelief, fear, oppression, depression. There's Christians right now taking so much medication. There's Christians today cutting themselves. Mm. Why, why is that? I mean, I mean... It, to me, boggles my mind that, that we serve a mighty God. Not that we have to live a perfect life, because we're not going to live a perfect life, but even in my storms, I have peace. This Christian that walk around, they don't have no Your peace. Identifies the issue. Exactly. Which, at its core, as you describe, out of the devil's cauldron, is an enemy at work that we cannot see in the natural. In the natural. But it's very much there in the supernatural realm. Very much active. He is on assignment to keep you broken down, beat down, broke, depressed, mm -hmm. living in fear, living in pain, diseased, and that's not God's plan for you. Absolutely not. That's never God's plan for you. There is a kingdom of darkness, but there is a kingdom of light that is here for you today that can set you free. And once the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. Put your faith in the right place. Put your hope in the right place. Submit yourself to God. You know, give yourself to the Lord. Let God set you free. Because the bottom line is there's an enemy out there to come still, still, and destroy. So I'm te I, I want people to understand that the, the, the book is not about me. It's never about me. Mm. The book is about, you know, the, my pastor Carter says to me, for the souls of men and the glory of God. That's, That's what I'm here for. That's, That's what God saved me for. That's good. To open up the eyes of the believer, to open up the eyes of the unbeliever. If I have to suffer for 25 years so you can get your freedom, so be it. But what are you wanting people to get from this book? What are you wanting them to understand that they can, they can apply to their life? You know, one of the things I say is the book is never mine. The, belong, the book belongs to God. I want people to know that there's a spiritual realm, that you don't have to be in the condition, in the state that you're in. This book has impacted people's lives. This book has touched people's lives, transformed people by opening people's eyes. People have gotten saved through this book. People have gotten delivered from witchcraft through this book. So, so it's supernatural. It's not me. It's not about a, a man. It's about the man, Jesus Christ, right. that can set you free, that can put you in a life like you said, a life of purpose. Even when you go into trials, you still got peace. Shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. Every fragment the pieces together. Only That's God right. can put the pieces together. So we are introducing someone saying this is just a vehicle that God can use. They bring your life to a place of not only abundance, but a life of peace. Shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. You don't need to be uh, in a in, in, in place of entrapment where you can be in a place of freedom.